Gundam.tk presents Master Grade Dual Gundam Assault Shroud. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert, one eighty four, two Rs, two Bs from GundamReviews.net, and this is going to wrap up my review of the Master Grade Dual Gundam 1100 Assault Shroud, something that Seed fans have probably been waiting for for almost a decade. Anyway, it's time for a list of all the good and bad things that I could think of for both the Dual and the Assault Shroud, so let's get to it. So let's kick things off with the build at the beginning because the dual Gundam, when you put it together, well, I gotta say that the build itself is not gonna be all that exciting only because it seems like the end result is not going to be all that exciting. The inner frame was certainly a treat to put together though. It's got tons of features. Can't wait to see this used four more, three more times anyway, at least, if not that magical fourth time that we can all hope for. But in terms of the colors and the waist section, it's just there's nothing interesting about the dual Gundam that I'd say. It's certainly the strike, but it doesn't have the strike's cool features to it just in terms of visual impact. Plus, of course, as the protagonist, it's going to have a little bit more impact than something that we only saw a lot of once it got covered up about eight, nine episodes in. In terms of the details, the hand is going to fit in pretty well there, but you can see that every once in a while, the bazooka is not going to attach in very well. Especially bazookas are going to have bazooka problems in terms of just the way that they rock onto the shoulder there. You're not really going to be able to use this in assault mode when it's got the assault shroud on either too, just because you're going to already have this weapon up here on the top, and it's just already got a whole bunch of bulk there. But it is a little bit problematic to get it lined up, but every once in a while, if you do get the finger part to attach in just perfectly for this triangle attachment point, it can actually work pretty well. The shield, on the other hand, is going to have some problems just because it's not going to rotate around, similar to what the problems that the strike had. It seems to be a little bit exasperated just by the fact that it's got these blue parts sticking out over to the side. But it's once you get into the assault shroud that you're going to have more problems. You've got more good things and you've got more problems with it. First of all, when you're putting the parts together here, this ankle part is going to feel a little bit loose until you actually put it onto the body. When you put on the front parts before sealing them up with the sides, they're not going to feel that great. And you may have seen, yes, there's a reason why he doesn't have his front skirt on, and that's because all it's going to do is fall off. There's got to be a trick, and I'm hoping somebody can point it out to me. But otherwise, every time that I try to line up these independent moving front skirts, it's just going to be problematic. If you're doing any posing and grasping out from the back, it's just going to fall off as well. But overall, I think it's going to be an assault show out mode for 90% of the time, as I said. So why Bandai would bother to put on independent moving front top or sides of the skirts here it's just a little bit beyond me because it just seems that the more important thing is to have a solid attachment point, especially somewhere that's going to get moved a lot when in terms of posing. In terms of other problems here, you're going to have just a little bit of difficulty when you're putting on these thrusters. I had the bottom one fall off one time, and the beam sabers are just going to be a little bit problematic because they're going to interfere with the way things go. But the biggest issue is just got to be the lack of mobility that you're going to get when you put on the assault shroud. You had so much great mobility that I was almost taking for granted with the dual gun, in which I'm probably never going to show off. And when you've got this kind of mode, you have all these cool things thanks to the inner frame, and you're going to lose a lot of them. Starting up here with the shoulders, where you had the ability to move them up and down, you're going to lose that. You also had the ability to pop it almost 90 degrees forward when I was looking at the parts. Unfortunately, that's just not going to happen. Also, the cockpit hatches are very problematic to open up when you've got it in this mode. So it's disappointing that the upper body, which did move so well, is just not going to happen when you do this. But then again, it's got a lot more pluses in terms of just the cool poses, even though you can only pull off some of them with this many weapons and this many cool looking weapons and this bulked out form. You can imagine that there's a lot of pluses as well. So let's go on to the positive, starting with the dual Gundam, and yes, back to the build. The inner frame was a ton of fun to put together, as was just seeing the way that everything was going to fit and thinking back to the Strike Gundam and just how things have changed over the 10 years or 9 years, I guess, since the Master Grade first came out. Now, like I said, it was very dull when I put the, the dual Gundam, could be called the dull Gundam, I suppose, when I put it together, until you actually start to try to do things with it. And the posing, I've got to say, is just absolutely incredible. I wonder if Bandai has not found that perfect mix of Master Grade almost 2.0 quality where I'm just saying that the idea being is that you've got a million moving parts and things are going to move exactly where you want it and yet they're going to stay there. So people that have been frustrated by newer kits like Master Grade 00 Gundam and its ankles and Exia and things like that, it just seems like I'm not going to use the Duel a lot because the Assault Shroud is going to be the main feature, but it just seems like things are going to work. The cockpit feature and the way that opens up is a huge bonus. The knee bends are great. The shoulders are looking reminiscent of the strike. The blue little details over on the side, and I have to say that I'm a big fan of the head sculpt. The blue color is really going to pop. It's got a great gray, a gray V fin to go along with that orange jewel. And the thrusters all over the backpack. I don't usually talk about backpacks unless we're talking about an old school seed one. 
or something I mean with a huge seed wingspan on the back. This one doesn't have it, but it's got movable parts and all sorts of colors all over the place and everything about the Duel, once I put it together, actually impressed me if you can get past its bland nature. That's helped, of course, by the fact that it's got two cool weapons in the form of the strike shield and this weapon over here, including the fact that it's got that detachable rocket on there. But once you move on to the Assault Shroud, you're gonna get tons of bonuses, starting with just the assembly because it was a lot of fun to put together and talk about the colors, you've got that dull gray underneath for the dual Gundam, but when you put on this purple, it just is a fantastic complement with the orange, and I think that it's all the better off for it. But putting everything part together, it has enough moving parts that you're always curious about what they're going to do. From the legs with their movable thrusters on the back to the shoulders, which are going to reveal orange missiles inside a dark gray outline. Just fantastic things that we've seen Bandai learning recently with the Master Grade Heavy Arms. It's just great to see it actually here in two tones. The forearms, which are incredibly dull to assemble, actually work really, really well when you put it together. And the chest is going to look fantastic. It does open up in two places. The orange is going to look great. The dark gray, yes, it's going to limit all the mobility that you would have normally gotten out of the shoulder. But the chest overall is going to look well protected and armored. This blue part, which I thought looked okay on the actual duel, is going to look all the better when you slide these parts onto either side. And again, I'm just a big fan of these parts over here. And this gray weapon, while a little bit nondescript, just the fact that you've got it up there and you can position it in a million different ways because it's got very good posability. It's only the beam saber handle that's really going to get in the way up there. Is just a huge plus that no matter what you do with it, it's going to look really, really cool. Yes, there are negatives and things falling off, but when you combine the fact that it's got a million thrusters back there, all of them looking good and... Remember that there's one other bonus in the form of this massive weapon. It's going to be primarily for the duel, I suppose, that you could try to fiddle around with getting it up here on the shoulder. But I think it's something that the duel would use, and it's certainly something the Estrays would as well. But I think this guy is armed up enough, and that's certainly a good thing. He's big, he's bulked out, he's colorful, he's going to look cool no matter what you do. The aerial base is going to work really well if you've got him in duel mode just because of the posability. This guy, he's not going to have so many aerial poses, but you can pull off the one on the box cover and that's probably going to be enough for me in the long run. Combine it with things like the beam sabers, which you wouldn't think are going to be all that exciting, but this guy has some cool poses in duel mode and assault shroud mode, which you can guess is going to lead to a verdict of... That this is going to be a cautiously optimistic yes, and that's for a couple different reasons. First of all, the duel, it's dull, but on the other hand, it's incredibly poseable if it was just a Gundam by itself. Let's say it was a lead and it looked like that, or at least had a little bit of a better MS design. It's something that I'd be very, very impressed with the assembly and what you can do with it. The Assault Shroud was a lot of fun to put together. I think it's going to look fantastic. It's going to lose a lot of the poseability that we've already seen. And the detriments are just a little bit problematic. I'd say that this is a 70-30 kind of guy where there's just, a, when you add on the Assault Shroud, all, seven things are going to work well and three things are not going to work well. But then again, it's got the bonuses of looking good. It doesn't need a lot of poses. I wouldn't call it a brick. It's not as bad as Master Green Unicorn or something like that. But then again, he's only probably got about three or four usable poses with the Assault Shroud on. But they are going to look good because the colors look good. The proportions look good. It looks very Master Grade-ish. And something that if you looked at the old 1 100th non-grade, something that people could only dream of 10 years ago. So throw in bonuses like this and a solid kit underneath, and I'm going to cautiously opt and say that this is a kit that if you're a fan of Isaac Jewel or Armored Gundams, somebody that you might want to pick up. So on to future speculation, where we don't have to speculate too much about the other seed bad guys that are going to be coming out, because it looks like we'll be getting them all. Thanks to that inner frame, you could see from the plates that it was going to have a ton of things to carry over, but there's going to have to be a lot of changes, especially for something like Aegis and things like that. Nonetheless, this inner frame certainly makes me want to buy more. It's as of the same quality as the wing kits, if not a little bit higher. The million dollar question, I suppose, we'll probably never get another duel outside of this now that we've got a high grade and advanced grade, 1 100th the master grade, but it's that guy behind there, the Strike Gundam. Is there enough from these plates, and is there going to be enough call for a Strike 2.0. It is 10 years old, and if you go back to the beginning of Master Grades, yes, the Strike has some things. It was a really solid kit, though, but it's not going to move as well as you saw with the Dual Gundam before it puts the Shroud on. So can they justify the sales? That's going to be a good question, but with the re-release, the HD re-release of Seed, there's never been a better time, but then again, what about the other kits at the end? Could we be getting a Justice? Could we be getting a Providence? Could we be getting, if we're getting six MGs from the Seed line alone, do they want to go and make a seventh of this guy? Anyway, I'd imagine you might like to hear one, or like to be getting one, so why don't you let me know what you think with a comment down below. And as always, if you've built this kit, it was a little bit slow putting this one together, why don't you let me know your impressions of this? Uh, I've only built it for, a, had it built for a few hours here, 
So I'm sure that there's some good and bad things that other people have found as well. And anyway, everybody, thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for lots more news reviews and everything in between. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. You know, if they do 2.0 me up, I wonder if they'll perfect me while they're at it. What, no speculation about a master grade goofing knighted? Especially in white?